the section 1 of this course, we covered the basic understanding of topology, hard surface modeling, organic modeling and then in the first video of the section number 2, we started with the first practical example of hard surface modeling which was the sci-fi pistol. We understood about a number of different concepts related to topology and modeling and we even discussed some important points that are really necessary to understand while mastering the hard surface modeling. And today in this video, we'll be adding some more details to the basic sci-fi pistol that we created in the last chapter and this will even make our model completely ready to later on apply the materials and textures in the upcoming video. So we left off here in the last video with this basic 3D model of the sci-fi pistol and to add some detailing to it, we'll begin with the hand grip of the pistol. So I'll go to the edit mode, then deselect everything and to make the hand grip look cool, let's first add a loop cut by pressing Ctrl R then left click and I'll place it on the corner like this and similarly I'll again add one more loop cut for this bottom part. Now I'll go to the side view, press 2 for the edge select mode, enable the x-ray mode and select all the edges which are around the corner or at the bottom part because we'll be applying the bevel tool to give them a realistic appearance. So with all these edges selected, I'll be pressing Ctrl B for the bevel tool and here you can see that if I take my cursor away then we are getting distorted results. And to prevent this from happening, you can enable the clamp mode or the clamp setting within the bevel tool. So to see how it works, simply right click to cancel the beveling and now if I press Ctrl B again and after pressing it, if I press C to turn on the clamp mode, then this will ensure that the beveled edges do not overlap with each other and the result will be completely perfect. This was another trick that you can use when you're using the bevel tool while modeling something and you need to get completely accurate results. After this, to add a 3D extrusion effect to the selected parts, I'll first enable the face selection mode to select this face in the middle and similarly, let's also select this one on the other side. Now for the extrusion, simply press Alt E for the extrude menu and out of all these options, select extrude faces along normals. This will allow us to extrude the faces along their respective normals and depending upon your 3D model, you can decide how much extrusion should be there and then left click to find dice. Moving ahead, the next thing that we'll be doing is to create some more loop cuts for the hand grip part. So I'll press Ctrl R to add one loop cut over here, then left click to confirm and right click to cancel the movement. After this, in this menu on the bottom left corner, I'll increase the number of cuts to something like 8 and with all the loop cuts selected, I'll be applying the bevel tool by pressing Ctrl B, slightly moving the cursor away like this and after this, just like we did with the corners of the hand grip, we'll be applying the extrusion tool to the bevel faces. So press Alt E, select extrude faces along normals and if I move the cursor downwards, then this will make the extrusion happen inwards and if I move it in the upward direction, then this will make the extrusion outwards. However, in this particular case, we need the extrusion to be slightly inwards to create a result like this. Now you can very clearly see that the hand grip of the sci-fi pistol is looking a lot better and cool as compared to the one which we left off in the last video. Now the next detail on which we'll be working on will be a circular part on which we'll be applying the extrusion effects and we'll convert it from just a simple circle to an amazing detailed shape for the gun model. So for the step number one, we need to have a circle in the scene. So for this, I'll press Shift A then go to Mesh and select the circle. Now the circle is added at the 3D cursor. Let's move it in the X axis over here. But yes, before moving forward, you first have to check that for this body of the gun on the top, which side is with the actual geometry and which one is the symmetrical side. So over here you can see that on this particular side we have the actual geometry and on the opposite side we have the mirror geometry or basically the symmetry. And now we have to ensure that the circle is placed on that particular side where we have the actual geometry so that we can work on the details by modifying the geometry from this side. So I'll go to the object mode then select the circle, move it in the x-axis to the opposite side. Let's also move it in the y-axis and we have to place it in front of this part of the gun's body. Moving ahead, I'll go to the edit mode. Let's rotate it in the y-axis by 90 degrees like this and also bring it slightly closer to the gun. Now we'll be using this circle to create a circular cutout in the gun's body. However, you can clearly see that the body of the gun on this part is not completely flat. Instead, it is kind of curved here, then it's flat in the middle and then again curved at the bottom, which means that it won't be very simple to create the cutout or the details. And to solve this problem, we have to use another modifier, which is also a very important part of modeling and topology and it is named as the shrink wrap modifier. To see how it works, with the circle selected, go to the modify properties, click on add modifier and in the D form, we'll be selecting the shrink wrap modifier. This one is an incredibly powerful modifier that allows you to create cuts or recesses in mechanical parts. And to use it for our gun, we first have to change the wrap method to project and this will ensure that the circle, which is the object on which this modifier is applied, will shrink to the nearest target surface that we have to select in the target object. So I'll click on this eyedropper and with this, I'll be selecting the gun's body. After this, to see the results, you also have to select the axis 
along which this circle will shrink to the target object and in this particular case you can see here that the required axis will be the x axis so in the axis select x and by doing this the circle has now shrink completely on the surface of the target object in the x axis and yes another thing to note here is that if you were having your circle on the opposite side then you would need to turn on the negative option in the axis in order to see the shrink wrap effect now we'll be joining this circle and the pistol together into a single object but before using the control plus g shortcut to join them together we have to apply the shrink wrap modifier to the circle so in the modify properties with the shrink wrap modifier click on this arrow icon and select apply now with both of these objects selected that is the pistol and the circle that we created press ctrl j to join them together into a single object and yes to ensure that the final object should be the pistol having the circle joined into it and not vice versa now the next thing that we'll do is to make some changes in the edit mode and use the circular shape to create the details for the pistol model so what we'll basically be doing is to create a circular cutout and then later use it to create the details and so now we'll be learning a way using which we can achieve this purpose so for the first step we'll be adding two loop cuts on this side by pressing ctrl r then use the scroll wheel to increase the number of loop cuts to two then left click move them and place them over here after this i'll go to the side view and to push them apart to cover the entire circle i'll scale them up in the y axis like this and left click now press 3 for the face select mode and we have to select all the faces where the circle lies after selecting them press x to delete all of them select delete faces and now after this step we have to do a slightly complex process so we basically need to fill the faces of this entire vertex loop and this circle however if i directly use the bridge edge loops in the edge menu then this will result in the formation of tries which as i already told you in the previous chapter are not the first preference while filling the faces. Do remember that the general rule while filling the curved areas of your mesh is that the quads are preferable to tries and the tries are preferable to the end gons. So for now, I'll press Ctrl Z to undo this and now we have to manually fill the faces by adding some loop cuts and making similar changes. So first of all, I'll simply select these two vertices over here and then select any two on the circle and press F to fill the face and similarly on the other side also, I'll select two vertices over here then select these two on the outer loop and press F to fill the faces. But now we observe that on the top part of the circle, we are having a total of seven vertices extra, but we don't have any more vertices on the top to connect them and fill the faces. Now, obviously we can select all these vertices together and form a single end gone face. However, as I already told you before, it should be our first preference to try some way or the other so that we can fill the faces with quads and not end gones. So I'll press Ctrl Z and now we have to do something that will help us to get seven vertices on this top part also and this is where we use the loop cut tool so i'll press ctrl r then place my cursor over here and by using the scroll wheel i'll increase the number of segments to seven then press enter to confirm and right click to cancel the movement after this we'll be selecting the four vertices over here press f to fill the face and we'll repeat the same procedure till we reach this particular end And with this, we have now filled all these faces on the top side and that too with the quads. Now moving ahead, for this curved edge on the outer loop, we are having a total of 9 vertices. But over here, we have to connect them to just 2 vertices, which means that we have to get 7 more vertices over here. And so we'll again use the loop cut tool to add the extra vertices on this edge. So press Ctrl R, then with the cursor over here, use the scroll wheel for 7 vertices or loop cuts and press enter to confirm. After this, just like we did before, we'll be selecting four vertices and press F to fill the faces and repeat the same procedure for the remaining vertices also. After this, we'll be repeating the same procedure on this part also. So over here also, we are having a total of nine vertices on this outer side and just two vertices to connect them and create a face, which means that I'll again create seven more vertices here by using the loop cut tool. So I'll press Ctrl R, then set the number of segments or the loops to seven, press enter, and now do the same steps again to fill the faces. And once this is done, we'll now work on filling the rest of the faces. So over here, I have these four vertices and as a result, I'll be adding four loop cuts here in order to fill the faces. So press Ctrl R, then take the cursor over here, set the number of segments to four or the left click twice and now fill the faces by selecting the four vertices and pressing F. After this, on this bottom part, we again have a total of 9 vertices, but on this inner circle loop, we only have 2 of them to connect and form the filled face. As a result, let's add 7 more loop cuts here by using the loop cut tool and repeat the same procedure of filling the faces by selecting 4 vertices and pressing the F key. 
After this, I'll now select these four vertices, press F to fill this face and with this, one more part of filling the faces is now completely ready. As a conclusion, you only have to notice that on which side of the loop we have lesser number of vertices and to create the quads to fill the faces, we basically have to add the loop cuts on that particular side. For example, again if I get to the right side, which is this one, then here we need to add 4 more loop cuts on this outer edge loop. So I'll press Ctrl R, set the number of segments of the loop cuts to 4 and then start filling the faces with the same procedure. After this, I'll zoom in and again over here, I have total of 9 vertices but only 2 of them on this inner circle loop. So we need 7 more vertices by using Ctrl R which is the loop cut tool. Now just like before, I'll be selecting 4 vertices over here, press F and continue the same procedure for the rest of the faces. Now moving ahead, I'll be selecting these 4 vertices on the bottom, press F to fill this face. And at last, for this lower part, we are having a total of 5 vertices present on this inner loop and so we'll be adding 5 loop cuts on this outer part to fill the faces and complete the structure. Now at last, I'll select these 4 vertices again, press F to fill the faces and repeat the same step for the remaining ones. And finally, we have now filled all of these faces around the circle and that too with quads for a better geometry. In the end, we need to select this inner circle loop and to close it, press F to fill this face. But right now, you can see that this particular face which is formed is an N gone since it is having more than 4 vertices. But we won't be worrying about it right now because it's only a temporary face and we'll be creating the details and other things as we move further. But for now, the next thing that we'll be doing after creating this circle will be to apply the inset tool by by pressing I and left click and this will extrude a new face towards the center and provides us with a nice border. This particular step of adding the inset tool effect is very important because it preserves the shading around the edge of recessed areas which kind of prevents the distortion when you finally render the 3D model. After all this, I'll select this inner face and will extrude it towards the center of the pistol. So press E to extrude it like this until it reaches the middle part or basically the center point of the gun or the pistol and because of the mirror modifier, it will turn completely flat. Now moving ahead, in order to create a design, I'll be adding a cylinder in the scene on which I'll then apply the inset and the extrusion tools. But right now, while being in the edit mode and also having the mirror modifier, if I just try to add a cylinder by pressing shift A and selecting it and then try to move it in the X axis, then we'll not be able to get perfect results. And these types of errors do happen when you're using the mirror modifier, especially with the clipping enabled because it distorts the object if it overlaps with the center point. To avoid this, I'll undo then return back to the object mode and now we'll be adding a cylinder in the object mode instead of the edit mode. So press shift A then go to mesh and select the cylinder. Now to adjust its position and the rotation, I'll switch to the top view by pressing 7 on the numpad, press G to move it and place it over here. After this, switch to the edit mode. Now I'll rotate it in the Y axis by 90 degrees. Also, let's slightly scale it down then press G to move it in the X axis like this. Now we'll adjust its final position by pressing G and move it like this and after this let's go to the edit mode select this face at the front let's push it slightly backwards in the x-axis and after this we'll be using the inset and the extrude option in the edit mode in order to create a cool design so to add the details and the design you simply have to press the i key for the inset then slightly extrude the face forward like this and repeat the same step with different variations depending upon what exact design you need in the sci-fi pistol after this, once your design is completely ready and you have even made all the adjustments, then return back to the object mode to take a look at how this design is looking with the sci-fi pistol. Moving ahead, we also need to join the cylinder with the rest of the pistol so that the design will also be mirrored on the opposite side. So to do this thing, select both the objects and press Ctrl J to join them together. And by doing this, I am now having the design or basically the details on both the sides of this pistol. Also, I would advise you to turn on the ignore sharpness option in the smooth by angle modifier for some even more smoothness and a better look for more realism. And with this, we also arrive to the end of this video. Today in this particular video, we learned about the usage of some tools in the edit mode that allowed us to add some details and it converted a simple looking pistol into a slightly more advanced 3D model with a lot more realism than before. In the next video, we'll be finalizing this model and we'll even apply some materials and textures and with that, the section 2 of this course will also come to 
an end. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel, press that notification bell so that you can get timely updates about the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.